But anyway, we're here tonight. Um, we're really pleased that you're joining us. And what was that, Pete Coleman? Are you bullet ventriloquists? Do you hear us? <laughs> can someone tell us if they can hear us, please? <laughs> I can hear you, if that helps. Okay, well, you can hear us all about Right, we're here to talk about Yender. Okay, the book. You wanna... Yeah, it's, uh, we did have a little session like this some time ago, in which it was just as disorganised as this. <laughs> um, so I might need to say a few things again. Um, We've been working on this uh, children's book. It's actually a reprint from something I did in uh, 1978. Um, and it started off with a, with an idea for a reprint. And um, But the thing escalated. Uh, and uh, we ended up then with uh, a colouring book. Um, and then Sarah said, you know, how about a, a, a limited run of 30 uh, uh, prints? So numbered and signed prints, so we did the prints, and then, <laughs> then a uh, sticker set, sticker sheet. Yeah. Um, and then there was some mumbling about animation and things like that, and we decided at that point that we would um, we would acquire the services of Oliver, um, Oliver Wakeman there, who's sitting at his keyboard with fingers trembling with excitement, or is it fear? Um, to write as a piece of music uh, to, to go with this uh, with this Yendor theme, um, and Sarah would would narrate it, um, and I didn't know it's yet 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 another um, facet of her uh, abilities that I had no idea about, um, and how she went into the studio and rattled this thing off in short order, and I was shocked, I was surprised. Um, it's brilliant. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, we, um, you know, we're thinking about printing all sorts of other stuff. <laughs> but uh, you know, Oliver's going to have a nice pair of underpants with him printed on, and and uh, some wellies and things like that. No, sorry. Okay, right, let, let's go far. Let's go back a little uh, step. <laughs> so we we just we saw last time that we got our book, the Ender book, which we are really, bits on it. really pleased with it. Hopefully you can see it the right way around this time. I believe the last time it was back to front. And now you can see the, the Yender there. The last time it read Rodney, which is Yender backwards. <laughs> so, yeah. So here's our book, which we showed last time. And you can see some pictures of it on the internet. We didn't have the colouring book last time to show you. So we've got it here now. I think it goes that way. And we have to say it has got really nice thick paper. So you can colour in felt tip pencils. Yeah, it won't bleed it through the paper. That way. There we go. Sarah's done a few pages already and they look brilliant. So yeah, so that's a colouring book. And we did our collector's pack, which had the colouring book, the hardback book, and the sticker set that you can see everything in there. And uh, yeah, so we did those, and we, we are delighted to say that the collector's pack has sold out already. It went phenomenally, phenomenally well. <laughs> yeah, it went very well, and we yeah, we're, we're really pleased to say that they sold out within the first 48 hours. So, yeah. Yeah. A, a good one for <laughs> I you, I bought a lot then? myself. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway, but the next exciting part is this audio audiobook and CD. Uh, it seems like some time ago since I narrated it now, that was... Just before, just the before lockdown. we got confined to our stable. Yeah, it was in between um, recovering from pneumonia and lockdown starting. Yeah. So, yeah. but anyway, it needed music. It needed something great. So, Rodney, <laughs> well, we got in touch with Oliver. Who better than Oliver? Oliver played, I don't know whether you, you realise, but <laughs> Oliver played uh, some amazing stuff on the, on the Trinity album that uh, we recently. Uh, well, I say recently, end of last year, released um, with um, American guitarist Jeff Sheets and a lot of different people you'd, you'd know on it, inc including Oliver's dad, the grumpy old um, uh, Rick, um, Tony Clarkin from Magnum, uh, John Payne from Asia, bass player, singer. Uh, there's a great uh, guy from uh, um, one of John's uh, acquaintances that he found in a club in Las Vegas who toots this amazing auto sax on it and um, 
Yeah, uh, Pete, but, Co Pete Coleman. Oh, hello, Pete. <laughs> Pete is there. I saw him Peace. coming up. Pete's coming like, up. This at the moment Pete. is a shameless plug for Trinity, which we will come back to later. Yeah, but yeah. this is about Let's Yender. Get and away. Let's let <laughs> Oliver get a word in edgewise. <laughs> Oliver, what would Go you like it, to say? <laughs> I, uh, I'm just, uh, I have to say, Quickly, thank you, Pete, for the compliment on the jacket. I, I made an effort this evening, even though we're all up and down. I thought I should do the do the um, do the right thing. Uh, yeah, the, Sarah and Rodney um, talked to me about the book uh, and asked me, you know, would I do a few little musical interludes? Thank you, Pete, and um, a few little uh, nice interludes, uh, bits pieces to go in between in the book. And so they gave me this as a as a, as a brief because it was just going to be a little downloady thing that you could get with with the book in the first instance. And um, so they gave me this, this brief bit of paper. So I, I sort of put it into a paper airplane, chucked it out the window and thought, let's just do the whole thing. <laughs> let's sort of go doing something which I hadn't heard really done before, because I've listened to a lot of audio books and it always starts off with some little bit of tinkly music that doesn't really have much to do with the, the story. And then it disappears and then seems to come back at random times throughout the, 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 the sort of, as the story is being read, so I thought, well, let's try and do something a bit different. Obviously, a lot of the music I've done has involved narration, and I thought it'd be really nice to try and do a narration of the entire thing, music to go with the narration of the whole story. So that's what I did, and I, I listened to Sarah's wonderful reading, uh, and then just sat at the at the keyboard and just played over and over as it got to different parts, and I basically let it inspire me with uh, with the story. So as the story was going, I would change the way I play and keep writing different parts that went with it. Um, and it was great fun. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and then I, I sort of, I didn't tell them what I was doing. And I kept getting all these emails saying, we kind of asked you to do a couple of little 30 second bits and pieces. Any, any chance of us getting it soon? And I said, oh, nearly finished. And they must have been thinking, how long is it going to take? And we did Trinity really fast. Why is this taking so long? <laughs> and, yeah, we, we actually thought that you really didn't want to do it for a while. We thought he's, 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 not, he's not doing it. <laughs> he deliberately left the country. Yeah, so I finished it all off. And then um, I remember just sending it to them. They said, have you done it yet? I just sent an email back. I said, it's nearly finished. Hello. I suddenly Sorry. I jumped screens. Oh, yeah, and, mate, we're back. <laughs> there we go. Hello. Cool. Um, and uh, so I sort of finished it all off and I just sent them an email. I said, it's on its way. And it was one of those moments where you really worry. <laughs> you send somebody something and you think, they're either going to think, this is really great, or they're going to go, what the hell have you done? So, um, anyway, so I then, Rodney, um, I phoned Rodney up and I did that thing that all people do, which is sort of phone up and say, oh, you'll probably hate it. And Rodney said, I'll have a listen to it in the morning. And I thought, oh, great, I've got to go the whole night now, just <laughs> 18 hours until somebody tells me it's awful. It's a way of reducing the fee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then luckily Sarah sent me a text after after five minutes when she was uh, a quarter of the way through it and said, we love it. So that sort of made life a little bit easier. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it all went, it went remarkably well. It was, it was, it was good fun. It was it was great actually, and then um, we sort of made a few little amends. There weren't many actually. I was uh, sort of expecting a few more amends than I got, um, and uh, yeah. So then, once we talked about that, then it was like, well, actually, this isn't really what we asked for. So what what can we do with it? They said we suddenly feel, uh, you know, I think you two then said, oh, this this there's more to this than is just uh, a bit of yeah, yeah, music. yeah. More Originally, we thought it would just be a a download. To accompany the company the book and yeah. uh, it just just a, a small something just to, a little add on mm. but it grew arms and legs and For turned into a, so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> turned into a full soundtrack yeah and we're, and we're I, I started to imagine you know it, I, I think there's a bit of a shorter to dosh to be talking like this, but I, I could imagine a little computer game with this little character bouncing down this path and these sort of things that Oliver's written this brilliant score where the, um, the, the critters in there, there's the uh, um, Glumpasaur and the Grab Sting and the Marauding Scrawnies and all these creatures, and he's brought out the character of all these um, of all these sort of nasties in the, um, well, not say that, it's a children's book, but, you know, in, in what he's written. And um, I, I could just see this thing either as a, an animated children's um, series or one-off maybe, um, can I stop you for a second? You can. 
I believe that there is text coming up on the screen as well, and it's not it's it's predictive. A ho Hollywood offer? Uh, no, it's predictive text. It's coming oh. up when we're speaking and putting up whatever it wants to say. So apologies, that's not us that's doing the text. It's happening on its own. Mm. My, I, I received it. My my sister Katie has just put a comment. Uh, I just love that the subtitles have changed Oliver's little amends to little men's. Ha ha. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we we're not in charge of that bit. <laughs> no. No, you get some some very strange things could occur with that yeah. sort of thing, don't you? I, I just thought I'd anything, apologize. Anything naughty or insulting, uh, please understand that we didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> just write it um, in his book. Okay. Sorry, Rodney, yeah, you were trying well, to say that... Yeah, that yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I always described our relationship with Sarah and myself as I'm Walt Disney and I get all these ideas about what I want to do with things. And she's Roy Disney, who runs the, uh, who keeps the purse, and and she has to turn to me and say, but we can't afford to do a film, or we can't afford a computer game, and this, and that, and the other. I, I still dream, um, but it, it was really a combination of the uh, the narration and Oliver's uh, soundtrack that made me think, uh, started to think big. So um, ah, we'll see. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, uh, any very potential inv with... investors out there, I think that's yeah, what Rodney's yeah. saying. We would like an animation out on the, the children's computer game. Out with the wallets, please. <laughs> yep. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver was about to say yeah, something, Oliver, I keep something to profound. And... No, that's <laughs> right. No, it's um, no. And poor Oliver's thinking this was not on the agenda. <laughs> Yeah, no, we've always flown by the, the well, pants here. It's all right, you could ignore the agenda, I ignored your brief. That seems a fair <laughs> <laughs> um, So anyway, I was, I was talking a while ago a little bit about the music. Um, We've been interrupted. That's all right. No, so the, the, the great thing about doing a, a, a children's story like this was is the way that you can make the music change. So the music can change from... Uh, sort of themes, uh, sort of setting the scene to music that goes underneath the voice uh, uh, and, and help raise the emotion around what the story is being is, is telling. Uh, and then, then you can also bring in little motifs that relate to the different characters or the different uh, people or little animals that are in, in the story. It's quite good fun. I'm gonna, I've got this thing set up here. I'll probably play loads of it wrong, but I'll give a couple of quick examples. Wanted to do a, a theme. Attempt, can you hear this? I'll look for some text. Does that hear? Anybody hear that? Yeah. yeah. I hear it. There's a little delay. They'll come, hopefully somebody will come back soon. For the text, see if anybody says they can yeah. hear it or they can't hear it. Hopefully they can. Yeah, hopefully. Everyone's gone. Everyone? I, I, yeah. Look at that. That's you. You can hear it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, Right. Done big themes in the past. We uh, the hand of the Baskervilles album, for example. We did um, um. So it was all very, very minorish, a very big sound. But because it was a children's book, I didn't want to make it all dramatically sad and very minor. We wanted to do the jumps from major to minor when the story changed to make it uh, more emotive. So. This, this theme starts with a... Which is really good because it, it gives a nice introduction to the thing. When we hear the actual whole thing, it's all orchestrated, loads of different synths and stuff going off. I'm just giving you a quick roti thing. So then when we go from the, the theme, then we go to the bit where Sarah starts to talk and she's setting the story so we um i didn't use a lot of piano on this so i usually play a lot of piano but this one i did a lot of Rhodes stuff on because it, it sat nicely under the under the voice um so it's it sort of this sort of stuff going on to underneath Thank you. 
So we got lots of nice little stuff like that. It doesn't get in the way of the voice as it's telling the story. So that little section there was, as you can see the picture, is the bit where they're sitting down and the dad's talking about the uh, adventures he was going on in there. It's a nice family family thing. And then Yendor creeps outside. Uh, and so you you change the, the way that the music works. It suddenly goes into sort of a descriptive to follow him. He tiptoes down the path. So you do... Toes along the path, lots of stuff like that, which is really, really good fun to write. So you get this music that stops and starts and changes, um, and then we get to uh, the little dramatic sections. Um, so, for example, I think it's, the character is the uh, the oh, we do Yendor next. Yendor has a little theme. Oh, Yendor, right? Okay, yeah. hang on. Yendor's the little chap in the middle there, and. Um, so yeah, this is a section where the story starts and he, he decides to go off and do the adventuring. And he's he's a young little lad full of the sort of exuberance and um, naivety of the big adventures. He thinks yeah. it's all just going to be fun and wandering around and a few things happen. He just wants to be like his dad. He's, yeah. he's, his dad's an adventurer who, who comes home and he tells these great stories of how, he, how they managed to fight off the, the eight-armed snapper, snapper. Yeah. and and then this little boy he sits there wide-eyed and he wants to be like his dad and he doesn't want to be this kid who has to go to school and do what he's told and mm. he, he wants adventure so yeah that's what he does sorry all of us you know the characters much better than i do so um <laughs> so anyway so with, with the end actually when rodney came around and we first talked about this he he was sat right here and um, he talked talk, talk to me about Yendel, and um, and I said, "Oh, Yendel, that's a that's a I've got a little idea for that." And I just came up with this little theme, which was when we were just talking about doing tiny things, which was um, sort of. So that was the Endor's theme. Um, and that came when Rodney was sat right next to me. And I just, I had my phone. I just recorded it on my phone. And then when I was doing the whole soundtrack, I thought, oh, I've got that little theme of Yendor. And I put it in and it, it matched that picture perfectly of him leaving the house and, and heading off yeah. his adventure. And, yeah. and that was great. And then there's a few others. There's a little section, I think, it's where the, the grab sting comes along. Is that the creature that we're seeing at the moment? That's the grab sting. The, the, the grab sting is the one who's busy thinking philosophy. Yeah. I think you could, are we on, we're not onto the Grumpus or yet, are we? No, no, not yet. So the, the Grumpus, yeah. for example, what is it? He, 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 it gets a bit tense, so the music completely changes. Yeah. So we get into a, a much more of a, this is where we jump from a, a major to a minor thing. We get a lot more, um, got more exciting. So you get sort of... <laughs> And you get these little timing changes and things, and the atmosphere builds up as the story's going. But the, the, the grab sting actually doesn't see it. So when you get the real build up of the final tension, and you suddenly realize actually it's a bit anticlimactic, you get the. Very dramatic and hitting minors and diminished chords, suddenly jumping to that to a major. And you suddenly, you suddenly realize as the story is telling you, actually, guess what? Nothing happened. And he walked off. And that's the music changes with it, which was great fun to do because it's not really, when you're writing a song or something, you wouldn't sort of think, oh, I'll just completely change the way the chords are going just for the hell of it. You actually follow the story, which was great fun. And then he, he goes off and he sees this um, other little character. And Rodney said to me when I was doing this, he said, um, he said, he said, I really like your piano playing. Really love your piano playing. I said, that's really kind, Rodney. He said, oh, it's one of your, your best things is your piano playing. I said, great. He said, can you not play any piano on this? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, he said it was a book that was from the 70s. And it has to have that sort of um, 70s sort of vibe to it. And so I thought, yeah, that's a really, that's a really interesting point. I'm going to try and do it using 
things like roads, orchestras, mellotrons. So I got all the different samples out of all these things. So it's, it's a whole section going on this bit here where you've got um, this sort of uh, fun little bass section and some um, big sort of old 70s distorted chords and uh, and, and this, this groove. In fact, in fact, I'll show you my, my latest toy. What is he going to do now? It's the first record that I played bass on. So I actually played a little bit of bass on this, which was which was really good fun. Um, and I played a little bit of guitar on it as well, which you don't often do. Or more than one musician, was That's it? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell him any of this side, but I thought I'd just show you my guitar, actually. It'd be really nice. This is, yeah. this is about, oh, let me find it first. <laughs> The rummaging sound was heard. This is when you realise that the guitar strap is caught under the guitar stand, and if I just pull it, you're going to hear an awful crash. So I've got to do this a bit gently. Yeah, talk amongst yourselves, folks. That actually reminds me of uh, Oliver describing his uh, technique for writing this stuff of the uh, uh, silent movies where people apparently, I am not that old, I can remember it. Uh, but apparently, uh, in a cinema, there'd be a, a movie would be projected on the screen, you know, black and white. But there'd be some poor bloke sitting around behind the curtain playing music along with it. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's some great musicians that developed from that sort of bizarre way of doing things. Anyway, sorry, Oliver, he's got something ready for us now. That's all right. I was going to show you this. This is just no. I don't show many people this. This is my this is my favourite guitar. So this plays a little bit on the record as well. Um, uh, and uh, it's it's actually quite unusual. It's a completely handmade guitar for me for my um, 21st birthday. My mum had it made for me, and it's called the OW93 because that's when I hit 21. Uh, and um, yeah, so I just played a little bit of this on the record. Um, so it's the first record I've ever played. I've played guitar on records before, not not massively uh, credited. I've sort of done a few bits and pieces, um, but I thought you know for this record. If, if Rodney wanted that sort of 70s sort of sound, I thought it couldn't just be all synths. It needed a little bit of organic instrumentation as well. So um, so I added those two onto it. Uh, and then, um, so we did this section with the, the Grumpasaur, which is this, this yeah, creature sure the this sort of, Hang on. in the slime. So this whole section ended up with a, um, we're going to get the picture of the Grumpasaur. There we go. So and it's just a really simple thing. Just count with this, this riff. <laughs> which is quite good fun so that really for me worked really nice that's the only section that you think in the in the record that i use a more modern synth to give us a bit of a soundscape going on in the background which i think was yeah a good cool. group it was an old um I think early 90s, somebody will probably correct me here, old early 90s called Wade Station, which had a little bit of a, a reputation back in the days, probably late 90s, I think. Pete Commons, watching, he'll probably know. Um, yeah. Dave Pierce has just written there, he said, play guitar, yeah. well, that's why I didn't get a call. <laughs> I <noticed> that, yeah. <laughs> Those of you who don't know, Dave, Dave played the... Um, Did you add drums, Rodney? <laughs> <laughs> No, they Not wouldn't let time. me. They wouldn't let me. Yeah, I, I told them that we couldn't afford anything else to be done too on this loud, one. <laughs> too loud and uncouth. We should just make a point out at this point that uh, Pete Coleman and Dave, uh, Mark Pierce that are joining us, um, both played on the In the Bleak Mid Winter single that we did at Christmas, Rodney. So the yeah. two fellow musicians yeah. Yeah. joining us. Yeah, we've, here, Welcome we've got... Welcome aboard, man. We've got Pete Coleman here. I can see Trinity album behind Oliver's chair. That was my review <laughs> later. That's my. That's when they, they do a sales pitch. I can do. That. We'll come back to that one, and then as I said, we've got Dave Park here. She's here. So yeah. Yeah. What's well, absolutely awesome musicians yeah. who've played on Bleak Midwinter and Pete on Trinity. Mm, yeah. Well. Both did a good job. A very good job. <laughs> Okay, right. So, so sorry. That, that's okay. So that sort of gives, a, and I, I'm not going to play every little part of the the music for. The oh, thing. we've got someone else as well. We've got Kev and Miv. Okay, Miv. Same old winter. Yeah, there we go. Welcome along. We've got the bleak midwinter family. Yeah. Oh, and sorry, I just have to say this one. Does Sarah sing? She has a lovely voice. No, that is why I <laughs> I speak in this because <laughs> I can't sing. So. <laughs> Anyway, right, 
Or my sister just put ha ha to the singing comments. <laughs> um, I can't. Yeah. Hey, can we go back to the Grumpusaur? Yep. Well, I'd finish yeah. the theme on the morning. That was just to show you the theme. But that whole section is, is quite quite good fun. And there's lots of little sections, I think, after that. He runs away and he starts falling. So at that point, you start doing all the little uh, chromatics and little tricks like that. All the little things to show. Oh, he's starting to fall. And as he falls, he starts slowing down as he falls. So you slow it all down. It's great fun. It's really good fun to do, and there's lots of stuff like going out. And the whole the, the underscore, as Pete mentioned earlier on in the uh, in the notes, is um, is all uh, put together. Loads of different synths. It's not just me mucking around on a, on a, just a rogue piano. The whole thing is is arranged, and um, it's been mastered actually by Carl Groom, who mastered the uh, Yes record that um, I did earlier on uh, late last year. Uh, who has done um, quite a few different records of mine uh worked with him for many years and he always does a great job uh and so yeah so we were lucky enough to find that he had a little yeah. to do the mastering so um thank you carl yeah thank so it's, yeah it's, nice one, carl. it's been great fun so the record is um is out i think may the 11th is that correct although i think pre-orders are available. Uh, well the, the pre-orders are now available and this probably seems a little bit cheesy but i i have to say a second hang on here there you go. <laughs> can you see it? <laughs> yeah, the pre-orders are available now. You can start ordering the audio CD. And we got a text today from the company who is making pressing the CDs to say that they should act, they should be with us on the 8th of May. So on Friday the 8th of May, Rodney and I will start packing for hearts and Kent. So please give us a busy weekend and Mm, and yeah. buy loads of them because <laughs> <laughs> not for my voice but Oliver's music is wonderful so yeah we have to pay back Oliver pay Oliver's 50 million quid that's it <laughs> Dave Pierce is just we gave Dave Pierce a massive plug and he's just written there that he had to take a phone call so he missed it I'm giving you double praise in one evening that's uh, that's all you get <laughs> You can watch it back again. <laughs> yeah, Dave, you can okay. play. So essentially, so that's how the music came about. That's and that's what I um that's what I delivered with 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 to Sarah and Rodney, and they came back and were really pleased. And it was great fun. I thoroughly enjoyed doing it, and I really hope that we do get to do you know the animated movie because it's like an eighteen minute piece. It's not a it's not a short story. It's not a three minute quick read story. Uh, it's a it's a good eighteen minutes, and um so. When the CD was put together, we talked about what we should do, and we sort of so we've got the main thing, which is the, uh, the 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 narration and the underscore, and then there's a just a version, which is just Sarah for the people that hate my stuff. They can just listen to Sarah on her own. Um, and, then there's a, and, then, and there's a bit of people who hate my voice, and they can listen to Oliver on his own. Tell it a different way. I was going to say there's a version where if you love Sarah's voice reading so much, you can learn to instead of singing along with it like karaoke, you can learn exactly what Sarah said. And then you can attempt to read the story with just the music, or you, yeah. or you can read it to your children with the music going on in the background. If you just, um, you know, you realise where the music changes, you could do that. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if anybody does do that. Uh, and then at the end of the CD, which is you know the best till last, Rodney um, talks about the uh, the background behind the the, the the book, which is also really interesting, but. Uh, I, I shouldn't be stealing Rodney's thunder for that bit, but Rodney probably best not to tell them the same. I don't see there's much thunder to it. It was just mumbling in my Somerset accent. He, he's I'm Somerset, not much of a reader. No, your Somerset accent is <laughs> wonderful. We we sat at the recording studio. We it was yeah, and and um, yeah, get yeah. it together recording, isn't it? Yeah, additional and mumbling. I, I I recorded Rodney's part to start with, and I and I said no, it, this isn't going to work. It's got to be Rodney. Doing his own, his own bit. <laughs> Can't do everything for him. <laughs> um, so yeah, he, he, well, it's great to hear his voice. I, I actually painted the pictures, and uh, I want to say that um, in 1973, when I did these, um, I, I was really, um, I, I, I had a, a way of working with a lot of different styles, um, because you're an ex uh, advertising man and. Uh, from day to day, I didn't know what uh, sort of style I'd have to use in, in the agency. Um, 
and most of it was uh, stuff that I didn't really want to get a reputation for. So I did this, uh, got these sort of things going in my mind um, before I left the uh, the agency. Uh, it was 1973 when I worked in the offices of Plastic Dog in Bristol that I started to do these in between um, other uh, other work, which included some of my early uh, album cover art for folk bands and well, I did the Thin Lizzy EP around that time. You can see there's a similar style to this um, to this book. And um, it's in uh, watercolour on, on a rough watercolour board. And um, I, I've recently returned to that technique. I mean, for example, the um, you know the things that I'm better known for. You know that maybe the current stuff, the the album cover art, over quite a long period of time has all all been done with ink, pigmented ink, um, and an airbrush for the skies and uh, things. Um, but this is entirely watercolor. There's nothing else on it, um, and uh, I I really enjoyed getting back into this uh, style because we've just. Um, uh, we just uh, I just actually finished uh, all the uh, necessary pictures for a book we've got called uh, Odd Miss Otherland. Which I think you can sort of see some pictures you behind us. see a few back there. Yeah, you can move your chair, Rodney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the Hulk eyed. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I'm really getting into it. So, you know, if, if anybody yeah, really dares to ask me to do something in my own style, I start getting really irritable because this is. This is much freer and it's great to sort of plug on the, the paint and and then turn it about and get it to run and cause if you look at this closely all these um sort of uh, um, mm. effects where where the paint actually runs down and you dab on some more water There we go. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, anyway, that was just um, you, you know a, a comment on the technique of this of this thing. It is um, something I did a long time ago, and then now I've returned to it again. There's a lot of that going on at the moment. I'm returning to things I did much earlier on in my career. Well, we've got no sound, and we've been lost apparently. Can you hear us now? Sounds gone. Hello. Well, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Mm, can hear Come myself. back. Right. How, what are we going to do here? We haven't changed anything. Let me. Sounds Sound. good. Right. Okay. Just to just a, it's a little interlude. Uh, not only did Dave Mark Pierce disappear on us, but I noticed that Pete is probably winding us up, but he's put. <laughs> Sorry, I went to make tea after the first minute. Have I missed anything? No, Pete, we were just talking no, about this guy. Any, nothing of any real order. interest. <laughs> <laughs> right, sorry about that. Where were we? Oh, I yeah. don't know. We, we, we've talked a lot, and there seems to be quite a bit of plugging going on of Odney's other land. And, yeah, and I don't yeah. know. Have you got anything else you would like to play, Oliver? I didn't have anything particularly to play. Um, I'm on the spot now. I was probably a bit of the, the. I suppose what we should do is is talk a little bit about. I keep. I'm looking at the screen, getting it the wrong way around. Yeah, we fun. should talk a little bit maybe about Trinity as well, because not only can yeah. you get the CD, <laughs> but the Trinity record. Obviously, we've never actually done one of these and talked about Trinity. We've done interviews, but we we didn't actually do a Facebook thing about Trinity, which oh, maybe okay. we should have. Done quite a bit. Um, Hang on, the grab thing will disappear in a second, and we go back that way now. Yeah. Oh, I've moved sides. I've got to readjust. Um, yeah. I've so, got control um, over that. It just does what it wants. Yeah. So, so I, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed playing on that record, um, and I did write a piece. There's a, a lot of people probably heard the story that I, I, I did actually play at, at Rodney and Sarah's wedding up in Scotland, which was which was great fun. Mm. Um, and, and I, I was asked to do a, an evening performance as well so I did a, a piano show in the evening which was great and for my wedding gift uh, to them 
uh, I wrote them a piece of music, which was called November Wedding, which um, I played at the wedding uh, evening do. And Rodney said, that's going on the album. And it's like, great. <laughs> <laughs> version on the album. So I did a version, which is the only uh, a version which I played, which only Sarah and Rodney have. It's never gone anywhere else. So Sarah and Rodney have the first version of it. Then we did a full band version for the Trinity record, which was which was good fun. And then Rodney came to me and he said, um, I need another track for the vinyl. I need something to go on the vinyl. We're one track short. Have you got any any ideas? And I said, well, uh, you know, November Wedding was uh, really, oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, and um, I said to Rodney and Sarah, I said, well, what about the piano version? Um, but I don't really want to put the version that I did for you because that's a special one just for you. It would be would be wrong. So I thought, well, what about if I did a, a piano duet version of it with myself? So I did that. So I played it as normal. And then I created another piano part to go with it. So I did a piano duet. Um, so I, I did that and I, I put it together. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was quite nice. It's got some quite nice um, runs. I'm trying to remember how, how it went now. Um, Basically, the the main the main riff, it, and then it had a secondary riff that came uh, later on. So it was, it was a bit like that. It was quite oh, fun. It was a bit like his dad because I, I used to go to. At rich concerts quite a lot and uh we used to play this tune that involved um it was called um uh, murder in a magician and every time it got faster and faster until in the end i think the keyboard caught fire <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, we, we were indebted to oliver for that yeah. uh, for that tune it really was an emotional time when when he played it at the wedding and uh I just have to. Yeah, we knew nothing about it, did we? Yeah. And, th and this other, uh, you know, the, uh, the the piano duet is like uh, Oliver described it as a as a, a dark piano side and a, and a light side. So they, they balance each other and, and, and intertwine a bit like this. Um, it's fantastic. You should buy the album immediately, even if it's just to hear that track. It's yeah. really on the vinyl, not the, you know, cheap, cheap and nasty CD. You don't bother with that. Yeah. Oh, we've gone. Are we gone again? Yep. Nope. Enjoy chatting to you and hearing your music and Rodney's Rodney's wedding. All of us. There you Thank go. You. Wedding guests now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I would have actually I would have actually practiced it and learned it. That was just I was just trying to remember. I was playing. It was like, where do I go now? Was there a section? What? I, there was a little fudge in the middle of that as I went. Where did Where did I go next? I really should have practiced it. That would have made much it's more sense. Church, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Church. Walking up the aisle and. Uh, <laughs> and I yeah. kind of knocked you completely wrong. <laughs> we should tell that story. We'll go, we can go on for hours, but we should tell that story quickly. Yeah. We, um, one of the I haven't rehearsed this one either. One of the pieces I, I yeah, my <laughs> track was called um, "Perfect Day," uh, which went down. <laughs> and it had this nice. Uh, thing. It was actually written about the, um, I wrote it the day after I met the lady that was to become my wife. I came home uh, and sat down the next day and wrote this piece of music uh, called A Perfect Day. Uh, and um, so because I'd written it about the lady that I ended up marrying, which is Lisa, we, uh, I thought well, it'd be quite nice to play that, um, at the, you know, the evening do. And, and Sarah and Rodney both really liked that piece and said, would you play it actually at the wedding? Uh, so I thought, okay, great. So while everybody was in the, in the church, uh, waiting for for Sarah to arrive, I was sat at the piano and I was playing uh, different classical pieces, just and just noodling around, creating creating a sort of soundscape uh, for for people to you know listen to whilst they were waiting. Um, but Rodney and I had gone to the church earlier on in the day, and um, and I mean this in the nicest way. Rodney had pretended to be Sarah um, because <laughs> he said, uh, you know, piece, perfect day. It's it's three and a half minutes. Now it's not going to take Sarah three and a half minutes to walk down the aisle. So what we need to do is time how long it will take for her to get from there to there 
and I can uh, rearrange the music so it fits. And so Rodney pretended to be Sarah and he came in and walked down the aisle and nodded to a you couple of, <laughs> he, he, you know, he got, he had to walk just, just, just right. And um, <laughs> difficult with that dress on. <laughs> we're digressing now. Um, so anyway, so we timed it and we got to, and I said, okay, Rodney, so I reckon what I need to do is I have to change the music quite a lot, but I'll change it here and I'll put this bit in here and I'll get to that part there. And, as, and so I'm all prepared, and then the car turns up outside. I can see where I'm sat. I can see the doorway, and I see the car pull up, and I see Sarah get out. And she comes through the door, and I go, right, start playing. And I start going. And Sarah walking down, I'm going, right, okay, the timing's really good. And she goes like this. And then she stops and turns and starts having a chat to someone. And I'm going, I'm looking at Rodney, is she going to keep walking? What's happening? And eventually I have to sort of noodle the way. <laughs> she starts moving. <laughs> and you can carry on the thing again. But it's at the moment, so I'm thinking this is the biggest thing I've ever And here I am, desperately making something up in the middle of a piece of music just to cover the fact that Sarah's decided to stop and have a bit of a chat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Oliver. <laughs> I'm not <That> was, <laughs> In fact, Dave's just written there and says, Where did you get married in Scotland? And I can't remember because I turned up in a taxi in the middle of the night to a house that was just. It was quite strange, wasn't it? Whenever we turned up, it was dark. And <laughs> yeah, it was in Scotland. It was in Aberdeenshire. Yeah. Uh, and I love the country house. Yeah. We, we had all to ourselves for the weekend. And it yeah. was absolutely amazing. And all of our. Lovely food uh, as well. Yeah, yeah and he, he, he like even played in the evening and kept yeah. going and yes yeah. it, it was amazing yeah. Thank you. Go and then put the piano away or, or turn it off and then um everybody wanted to have a sing-along if i remember correctly so i yeah. ended up yeah. playing yeah. alley we were inebriated ah. by that time i now believe we've got jeff sheets with us as well Hi, hey. jeff we've been talking about trinity we need you on here next time <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's come up on my phone jeff is watching you Marvellous, marvellous. A big shout Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, Jackie and the dogs. Jeff, Jeff is, uh, um, uh, has got this hidden talent. I mean, he's not only an amazing guitarist, but he's, a, he's a, you know, in, in the US, he's from near Kansas City. They have this practice of uh, throwing frisbees for their dogs, and um, that is a big thing. And he goes along to these big football games and things like that in, in the interval. He, him and Jackie, his wife, Burge, and they've become world champions at it. And then um, they got these amazing dogs that are jump through the air and do all these uh, fantastic things with a piece of plastic. So that's Jeff's other side. Yeah. Right, Jeff? Or have I? Thumbs up for <laughs> yeah. Jeff and Jackie's dogs. <laughs> yeah, Jeff plays some very cool stuff on the Trinity album. You should, uh, you know, have a yeah. listen to him. Yeah, well, we should put up the thing at the bottom again. You can buy from. <laughs> <laughs> There's still a few left. <laughs> well, yeah. well, we're oh, we, we, uh, well, we, we've kind of gone on for three quarters of an hour. Sorry if we've bored people and lost people, and uh, but we haven't done our Q and A yet. Does anybody want to ask any questions? And it's going to go quiet for a little minute because there's a delay. So, okay, well, I'll sing and tap dance. <laughs> uh, right, well, I could go through the comments and see if we've got anything here that we should be replying Somebody to. Somebody here would like to find out what the inspiration for Yendor telling the Grumpasaur to stop eating slime. Where did the inspiration for that come from? Oh, <laughs> uh, dear. <laughs> yeah, that, that, um, that is, where are we here? Get the comment up. I, I, I don't even know if I should actually say it. Yeah. That's my little sister there, Katie, and uh, yeah, the stop eating slime came. Uh, uh, my my <laughs> my little sister, she 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 saw a dietitian at one time, and and uh, she was dietitian shouted at her and told her to stop eating crisps. <laughs> so that was where this. I I think I, I'll leave it there. <laughs> not getting get involved in this. <laughs> no. Let's leave that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what have we got? Uh, have we got anything else here? Pete would like to know if Rodney's just washed his hair. No. No. 
No, I never wash my hair. I just sort of sleep in, you know, it's like uh, this pull through a hedge look is uh, is a natural. <laughs> I would like to know, do you still have copies of the 1970s? I, I, could, I could do with a haircut of some sort, but. I, I need to just like hide that comment there because I'm still on it for a second. Right. Okay. And fix this. And where are we? Yeah. Bill Sandals, here we go. Do you still have copies of the 1970s gender? I've got two copies, um, which I guard jealously. Um, one is almost spanking new in appearance. The other one's a little bit on the um, beat up side. Um, and I don't propose to sell them, Bill. I'm sorry. That, um, give me an offer, anything over 10 grand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next, we have Pete Coleman. <laughs> can you lend us a few, Bob? <laughs> yeah, you can see we're not getting much serious questions here. <laughs> no. uh, Michael Reed, who's best to work with, Oliver or his grumpy old dad? <laughs> oh, that's a good question, isn't it? Oh. Oh, I can't. You can't who is best you know. to work with, Oliver or his grumpy old dad? Right. Well, right. <laughs> my my uh, work with the grumpy old man is is not been very extensive. I I've known him for a very long time. You're very good friends. Um, he's always uh, you know uh, inviting us to concerts and things um, here, there, and everywhere. But I mean, originally I I approached Rick and said, uh, ask him if he'd uh, do oh, sorry, some. Sorry, wait a second. You've got Oliver just sitting there waiting for the answer. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, love working with Oliver. We love you, Oliver. You've done a lot with Oliver, and um, you know, not only if you know that, but he, uh, in the first place, I, he he sort of contacted me about his schoolwork when he was much younger, and uh, I think he taught some of my books and things. So it's a long relationship there. Um, I asked him if he'd get involved with Trinity um, after having um, he, he licensed the uh, uh, Jabberwocky image from me. And I listened to that and I thought, this is my man. I, I think he's right for Trinity. And, uh, but, but he won't want to work on, a, on an album with a, you know, a non-professional drummer and a few, uh, you know, few people. Um, but he said, yes, uh, he's left. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Obviously offended him. I think you need to say that it's best to work with Oliver. And then he'll come <laughs> yeah. back again. Yeah. Encore, well, encore. Obviously, <laughs> Oliver was, was best. He's done some brilliant work, not just on Trinity, but on other things as well. Not the least of which is the thing that we've been talking about here with the Endor. Uh, uh, <coughs> and, um, Are you okay? Walter went down the wrong way, and I was having a mild choking fit, and I thought I could make this look subtle so I could walk out of the room so you could. Answer dad. Oh, yeah, they would have brought in the punters. I mean, if you take them on screen, that would have. Mm. But, yeah, the yeah. numbers are suddenly going up. I, it's how many people are ne watching. Never cease to be um, surprised by Olive, Oliver's professional way of, of, of just coming up with all these melodies. And, and you know, he'll take a tune that is, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit pear shaped and he'll knock it into shape in next to no time with these fill in bits and things and stuff that comes up under the. Uh, the other parts and, and um, you always get more than than you asked for like 16 minutes more than the last yeah. one <laughs> well you've got a nasty habit of turning the drums down when you possibly yeah. can but other well, than that he's a brilliant bloke to work yeah. with I, I i think he's second to none well i might just move move on to the drums there because we've got a question can you still here. get your hat on oliver <laughs> got robert corey or corey Correct. did you manage to use your drum boogie drums in the soundtrack or thing no, um, in this soundtrack, I'm not. I, I don't actually uh, put in an appearance at all because um, I felt that we didn't need anything that uh, thunderous. Um, Oliver seemed to get the whole thing in the bag. He's got some timpani <coughs> and stuff like that in it here and there, but um, no, I don't think it was needed. Um, and obviously the lockdown happened at the same time. So yeah. uh, Rodney, there was a thought that he might go and do the drums, in the but, first place, but it wasn't going to happen. Because yeah. But when I when I heard Oliver's, um, uh, you know, what he'd written, I, I thought, I didn't need drums. Uh, it would mess it up. No, um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll get my own back later on on something else. <laughs> okay, next we've got Henry Potts, Rodney. Do you remember when your band 
squid question mark open for yes supposedly uh i think it was actually in a band called barnaby good when i did that gig but it's so long ago that i can't remember it was um a tree a bristol trio with terry brace and i'll read both of both of whom are you now passed on um yes we're, we're one of these bands that um i mean i i don't know what i should be saying this but um uh, Mr. Dean has done a brilliant job over many years of uh, of album covers for that band, and uh, I, I don't think that anyone could have improved on that. You 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 can't you can't separate the two. Um, but I did in my early days play um, with uh, in in the uh, clubs and uh, you know venues around Bristol and bumped into Yes quite a lot. We the company that I work with, Plastic Dog actually uh, booked them for um for in venues and gigs around the southwest um and uh you know I, I even know how much they got paid for certain gigs but um, <laughs> actually playing on the same stage i think i think that was probably a, a barnaby good not the squid thing uh, band i was in but really i can't remember i used to drink a lot of beer in those days and mm. <clears throat> i think we should Probably uh, we could do this again another night. We might come yeah, back on and have a chat about Rodney. So it's a good question because I um, I used to do stuff um, uh, for a band called Stackridge in a Bristol band called Stackridge, but it was really a different style than what I used. It was a, a cartoon sort of style, and they were very whimsical, and sort of very strange sort of band. And um, I, I remember being in. Um, uh, the offices of a, a bloke called David Howells, who um, went on to to form uh, Gold Records, but he was, I think, he was then at the um, Transatlantic, not Transatlantic, Atlantic Records, and um, I'd gone to see him about some some things I'd done for for Stafford, I think it was, and and while I was in the office, he said, "Oh, I got this great." new artist i'd found and he's, he's done this uh, uh cover for the osobisa album and he's flying elephants and it was on the wall and i thought wow that is fantastic and and of course roger went on to do the, the yes stuff um after that um i don't think you can um you can improve on the on the combination of yes and roger dean i mean he's just done the, the cover for the for the album that oliver Tell them about that album, Oliver. Yeah, but what's that album behind you that's just sitting there all the time? Excuse me. I've, it's glass, glass water went down the wrong way. and so caused me all sorts of grief. This is the point at which I go, this album, you mean? Yeah, that one just happens to be sitting there. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is... I, I don't really want to talk Roger Dean whilst we're in the presence of a wonderful artist like um, Rodney, but, yeah, at the end of last year, I was lucky enough to work with um, Steve Howe and Alan, who I worked with with Yes for four years. I'm just um, trying to make it a little bit bigger so we can see. There we go. There we go. The from a page record, which is this one's a sealed one, um, which was songs that we worked on together back in 2010, uh, which was which was great. I was, I was very very lucky to actually be you know putting together a Yes record and having Roger Dean providing me with artwork whilst working with Rodney, and he was sending me wonderful images to work on with Trinity and In the Bleak Midwinter, which is up here, which is one of those in case people haven't seen that one either. Yeah. Which also, I should have taken them out of those sealed cases. There you go. You can see it a little bit better there. Healing um, yeah. so, so I was getting, you know, pictures from Roger for the mm -hmm. Yes stuff. And I was getting pictures from um, Rodney and I, I've been very, very lucky to work with wonderful artists because I come from that I come from that era um, with my age where I, I, I when I was younger I had records but CDs were the big thing and I, I bought my first CD back in oh, I can't remember the year I'll probably get it horribly wrong but it was in the 80s at some point I remember the very first CD I bought it was Rush's Hold Your Fire and it had a, a really quite a simplistic cover and so I never, when I started recording and doing stuff, I did a couple of basic cassettes. And then I think everything I did was was CD. And I remember getting my very first CD, which was Heaven's Isle, which is my first record. And I remember putting it into this machine and watching the numbers change and going, wow, this is amazing. And then I thought, oh, I'll never get to do vinyl. And I probably will never get to do a record where I have big artwork on the front. And I, I sort of felt a bit 
cheated a little bit as a musician because I grew up listening to wonderful records um, with wonderful artwork. And I thought, oh, I'm never going to get to do that. It's just going to be CDs and then it's going to go on to MP3s and then the artwork just is a tiny little thumbnail. So I was delighted when vinyl started to make a comeback and I got my first vinyl record, which I was on, which I think was um, uh, the Live from Leon, uh, Yes triple album. Uh, and I thought, got that. I thought, great, been on vinyl now. That's wonderful. And then, you know, Rodney phoned me up and I did a few sessions that ended up on, on vinyl. And I've got quite a little collection of things that have been on in vinyl now, which I, I never, ever thought I would do. And I think it's terrific. It's lovely. And the amount of people that seem to buy the vinyl stuff, it just seems to be people that just really appreciate the way that music and art intertwine. And I think that's such an important thing. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of people miss, and I, I don't mean that they miss the fact that they used to have it and it's gone. I think people miss that that interaction completely. Uh, my son, I have to sit down with him and explain to him how important music and, and, and art together are because he's just used to listening to things on YouTube or streaming stuff. And I sit down mm. with him and say, look at these pictures, look at these posters, this is what I'm trying to do. And he's now upstairs on the computer upstairs with a little keyboard I've given him and he's trying to write his, his, his first sort of musical pieces. And, He's yeah. now trying to get it, and it's really important. Yeah, um, well, there are similar um, complementary yeah. disciplines. I mean, when I was at art college, uh, you know, in the, what was it, sort of 60s, actually, um, I noticed that in the break, uh, you know, the, the, the mid-morning break, the, the students would troop into the common room, and um, there'd be guitars and all sorts of, instruments in evidence and and um they the rest of them played in bands and uh you know there, there was a little record player down there that uh that this you know the, the people used to used to fight over because he, in those days you had uh you know jazz modern jazz in particular was a it was a quite still quite a big thing in the 60s and uh but then there's a the rock and roll it was on the other side of the, they, and they wanted um you know Eddie, say, Eddie hi, Cochran and um, who's that? Bob Moon. <laughs> Bob Moon. Yeah. Hello, hi, Bob. Bob. How's it going? And hi, Candia as well. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. So um, <laughs> yeah, and so there was this sort of fight over the record players. Whether they got their rock and roll or their jazz, you know. I want Thelonious Monk. No, oh, we're having Eddie Cochran, you know, and and so on. But what it it, it led to me um, thinking to myself, well, oh, I get a band together because it's it just seemed to be a natural thing. Mr. Um, Matthews, I'm going to stop you. We're going to talk about that another night. I'm running we're off up, the lip. We're up to 59 minutes now, yeah. and, and I'm aware of the fact that some people might like to do something else in their Tuesday yeah. evening. Yeah, well, apart from that, I want but to I Just before we go, sorry, Oliver, yeah. There's more questions you should ask. Yeah, I'm saying there's a few <laughs> questions that we would just like to, so we've got here, Bill Sanders putting a cheque in the post. That's £10,000 <laughs> for each of those gender books. Thank you, Bill. Good man. David Mark Pierce, I agree. Oliver always pulls the best work out of me. Yes, he's, he's, yeah. he's great. Yeah. Tom Tobler, can you please use your wonderful skills and contacts to make a virus character for the very young to learn about the important times we've lived through? And yes, I I I know something about this from Maureen. Maureen is Rodney's niece, who we've also got here tonight, and we've got my little niece Chelsea there as well. I've noticed as you've mm -hmm. put up a lot yeah. of you auntie. Uh, Uncle Rodney Hello, and Auntie Sarah. So yeah, we've got yeah, I won't say their ages. We've got one rather young one and one middle a bit older, little bit yeah. older. Just mm. just a teeny bit older. <laughs> uh anyway, so so what this is about is I believe is that Tom has thinks that you could make a really good character from your with your skills to teach kids about the coronavirus because it, it Obviously, yeah. like it would be really good, and I think I think it's a great idea mm. because um, kids do need to learn about. They're really confused at the moment, and, yeah. I, and I know from my nieces and nephews that they are confused. And I don't know how you feel, Oliver. Your kids are feeling about it, but it's, it's difficult. They don't know why they're not going to school. They don't, and all these no. things. And it, 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 yeah, so it, yeah, I think that's a great it, idea. It, it, yeah, it's actually a very good idea. Um, and yeah, I've got my sister here says, yes, Tom, excellent idea, a corona bug gas bag. Ah, now there we are. <laughs> yeah, um, my, my nephew, Rafferty, he he calls the coronavirus the corona bug, and he's, he says, he when will the corona bug be gone? <laughs> so yeah, he wants to 
Crony Bug gone, so maybe a Crony Bug gas bag yeah, or something. Yeah, I've probably got a few that would already suit that. I'll that keep I'll keep Rodney going with that, and then yeah. it might need a bit of music, Rod, uh, Oliver. Yeah, something flat and short, right. short, tiny piece. I've got to plug in. So I've got to sort of All right, right. Next question, then. I'll, I'll take over, then, shall I? Okay. Uh, uh, Bill Sandals says, might Yendo expand into a new Peter and the Wolf Concerto? Um, I think we want to do the animation would be the good thing, wouldn't it? That yeah. Would be the, yeah. That would be the next step. Yeah, um, a, a simple animation, I think, is what we, you know, and, and then we'd probably call upon your services to, to um, you know, embellish what you've already written. But, you know, I think what you've already done is um, uh, in, inspired me to think of, as I said before, uh, you know, things like a, a uh, mutiny on the bounty. Um, she's disappeared. Uh, um, where was I? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There you are. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Run out of charge, but I'm back again. Yeah, I, I, I just thought, you know, even what, what you've you already done, the music. <laughs> sorry. Um, it is actually suitable. It can be cut about and used for various purposes. And, uh, yeah, you I'm know, I'm thinking about contacting some people I know in the gaming business to see if they think it would be a good idea to make a little game of it. Um, but I, I think with, with this with this Yendor project, uh, it's a simple, simple look to it. And I think it's going to remain fairly simple uh, as an animation. Um, and, uh, you know, this sort of bouncy optimistic mm -hmm. character i can imagine coming down the path from the side of it, sneaking down there yeah i think we, we all feel quite passionate about the story now yeah. he's, he's this lovely little character and and he meets yeah, these wonderful creatures takes a lot of them on the chin and others he's a bit oh what have i done why have i yeah, why have i left home <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's yeah. it is just mm -hmm. a little good feel good story and i am sure you won't be disappointed with lots of nice uh, reviews back so far kids love it which is great parents seem to want to enjoy they enjoy reading it and want to read it to their kids so yeah I, I don't think anybody could be disappointed even if you're just buying the audio cd for the for the music or for the, the book for the art but i really do recommend that if you're going to get the audio cd we've got a package at the moment where you get it's a little save a little bit of money if you buy the book and the cd together because when you're listening to it, it is it, it's just it, it is a wonderful package to be able to to look at some of these amazing pictures if we get some pictures up in here amazing pictures you're having the story read and you've got the music going in the background it just pulls all the emotions it's a, it's it's a great just... um it's, it's a well printed book as well you know in my in my time i've yeah. had some horrendous Huge shout out Printing. to XYZ. Yeah, a XYZ, job. the printers have done a great job, even in these uh, times of, uh, you know, difficulty. Yeah, um, you know, we're really proud of the fact that it's made in Britain, yeah. isn't it? And we got that done here yeah. during the lockdown. So. What was that all about? Um, <laughs> That's the story itself is, is debatable as well, because, you know, is it a dream? Uh, or is it a reality? So, you, you know, you can make up your own mind about that. I've never stated one way or the other. But it's proper way, fantasy but, for... Yeah, is it? Yeah. yeah. So, we have one more question, which I think you need to answer, which I yeah, think is I think so. from Dave. I, uh, mm -hmm. if, Rodney, do you have a favourite piece of artwork that you've done for a band, i.e. one that you're most proud of? Uh, mm -hmm. You don't have to say Jabberwocky, obviously. Um, <laughs> Jabberwocky was not actually done for a band in the first place, but it, as a secondary license, it, I, it was very gratifying. Um, and, and then, you know, there's a Storyteller's Night thing I did for Magnum on a Storyteller's Night, which is probably what I'm best known for. Um, privately, um, yeah, you know, there are several that I think I'm quite pleased with, um, and some I, I hate. Uh, another that I think can, you know answers that question is a, is a thing I did for a band called Tiger Moth many years ago, a folk band, Ian, Ian A. Anderson's band, and um, it, it's got this uh, this well obviously a Tiger Moth playing a squeeze box 
and there's a big mark and on a, on a toadstool surface is a on the top of the surface of this toadstool right right in front of him are these two little insects and they're looking at each other lovingly and they're dancing and um, and uh, that is one of my favorites i think it sort of fits the music and i, I just like the image I, i'm into insects you've probably gathered um yeah so that is, that, <laughs> that is one of my favorites my favourites are Jabberwocky and In the Bleak Midwinter, oddly enough. Oh, nice one. <laughs> no, actually, genuinely, Jabberwocky, I think, because it was just, when, when you're looking for album sleeves, I remember when I was growing up, and um, I would go and visit my dad at the weekends, and um, I remember when he was doing different records for a particular record company, and he was doing quite a lot of records, and they were turning up, uh, in the, like in the morning and I'd hear him opening a package and I'd go, all oh, right, Dad, and he'd go, yeah, he's got the proofs for the new album sleeve. And I'd say, oh, yeah, he said, I wrecked it again, it's useless. And he always complained about the covers and they'd have to go and redo them and he, he just he always had, seemed to have a really difficult time with covers. And so when I got to doing Jabberwocky with Clive Nolan, I remember um, I, I, I studied Rodney when I was at art college when I did my um, uh, graphic design uh uh, college course and um rodney was very gracious and, and sent me some books and answered lots of questions and i ended up passing the course um uh, and i remember i had his number so i called him up and it was one of those moments where you go i'll be great i'll ask, ask, ask him he's got a, an album sleeve. and then you end up getting something that is beyond your wildest dreams that you know so much better than you ever could have imagined a cover could be and i think because of that euphoria of seeing this poster arrive and going oh my god that's that's just amazing. That's always been my favorite. In fact, outside of my music room on the wall is is the Jabberwocky uh, limited edition print all signed. I, number two, someone else got number one. I got number two. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, and and the Bleak Midwinter. I think I have a particular. I do like the one that's piece at piece at last as well. The doves inside the um the barrel of the tank. Um, but the in the Bleak Midwinter, I think. I, oh, that one's really special as well because um, I sort of watched Rodney compose it with his pencil sketches and moving things around and, and we were discussing how the piece of music was going to work with it. So, uh, And that was also, I've got framed and is in my lounge as well. So um, I think, you know, not just the fact that they're wonderful pieces of artwork because they have such a special personal memory to me as well, which makes them even more, um, even more special. So those are my two favourites. I know nobody asked, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, Any I, more there? well, yeah, we should really go through the last few questions. We've got Paul Muscat was lucky enough to meet you twice, Oliver, in Chatham. Ah, uh, yes. With me and my mom. What inspired you to have the cover of one of my favorite albums, The Three Ages of Magic? Uh, Three Ages of Magic. That was um, that wasn't what I wrote exactly. That was a that was by another. I've been. <sighs> Do you know, my dad always used to say to me years ago, he, he seemed to have lots of friends that weren't musicians that were sort of entertainery types. And you can see that in the people that he sort of, uh, you know, talks to on Twitter. He's, he's very into that. <laughs> I always seem to have, have lent towards getting to know wonderful artists. I just, there's a, I think what Rodney summed it up, there's a, there's a similar sort of discipline that goes with the, with the two art forms. Uh, and um, that was Anne Sudworth did that. And uh, lovely lady, very, very beautiful um artist uh, and she had this painting again it was a second license it was it was also used for a book um and i just saw it and i thought what a lovely picture it just seemed to sum up the the music that was on that album and um it didn't hurt that the the, the bloke on the front cover looked uh, everyone said it looked a bit like messy if i can find one up here uh, <laughs> amongst yourselves I should we're, be able we're to... talking amongst ourselves well yeah yeah I'm, I'm looking for the next question. Find a question while I search. Okay, well, we'll do another question while, while all of our search in there. Mm. Uh, here's one, yeah, for you, Rodney, from Ellis Pagan. Ah. Ellis, Hi, yeah. Ellis. Hi, Ellis. Nice that you're in, uh, you've got in touch tonight. Ellis says, I'd like to write a script for a potential TV series based on yours and Marco Palmer's Stanley and Livingston series. Could I have your approval before I do so? <laughs> well, uh, Ellis uh, came to one of our um, uh, retreats that we did, um, and he, uh, he he's a lavender castle freak. Yeah, um, a wonderful us, young man. Wonderful young man. He showed us some of his uh, his drawings, and um, uh, which were also wonderful. And then 
he, he eventually showed me some some scripts. He, he, um, Lavender Castle was a thing I did, the children's TV show with Jerry, the late Jerry Anderson. Um, but Ellis showed me these, uh, these scripts that he'd done uh, for um, that show, had it had it sort of run another kind of six episodes, but it didn't. Um, and I, I thought, great stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, fire away, man. Uh, yeah. Let's see what you can do. We, we, he sent, uh, Ellis sent one of his scripts that he'd written for, was it, The Lavender Castle? Mm. And it, he, he'd obviously watched Lavender Castle, knows it inside and out. The script that he'd written for such a young lad, I mean, you wouldn't, you couldn't tell. It was as if Jerry Anderson himself had written it. So, yeah, big yeah. shout out. With all the right sort of idiosyncrasies. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Mm. So, we I, will now go back. So, yeah, he can go for that, can't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. And then we'll I, go back to Three Ages of Magic. Yeah, that's the um, that's the artwork for Three Ages of Magic, which, which is lovely. And everybody's thought that it was painted um, a painting of me. Yeah. yeah. It does look like you. I thought yeah. it was you. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't. It was um, it was uh, an already already painted a picture, but I just thought it suited suited wonderfully. Um, but then again, when I saw you uh, play the first time, I saw you with yes, and I thought to myself, "Wow!" I, I thought it was your dad that was playing, and I <laughs> and, and I, I I looked and I, I remember <laughs> afterwards saying. Wow, the rest of them all's gotten they've all gotten really old, but Rick still looks young. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and then I found out it was yourself. But anyway, <laughs> moving swiftly on. Swiftly on. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have Mark Pierce. He, he he's liking. He still like the Bleak Midwinter. I love the Bleak Midwinter artwork. Princess Pride of Place at the top of my stairs. Oh, the Bleak Midwinter project came out with the blue for me and it's great to work with Oliver again. And then the whole project spiraled and became this wonderful thing that involved prints, Christmas cards, chocolates, etc. It was very special. Yeah, we we thought it was very special too. Yeah. And will we make this next one the final question of the night? Because seventy-three minutes in, and we might. Oh, what am I working on at the moment? Um. Well, yeah. What are you working on at the moment, Oliver? And is Rodney going to get the cover permission? <laughs> <laughs> More than likely. Um, I have been working on a, a record for a, for a while, and it started off as just a, a little thing just for me, because I, I've written a lot of commission pieces for people, for, for, for their loved ones. Um, and I've written pieces for um, my family, and I've, I've written a little piece for my, for my daughter, which is called Lottie's Tune, which is... Uh... <laughs> She's quite a jaunty little piece, um, and I've written a, a piece for my son, which I can't remember off the top of my head. I, I, I can remember, but I'll play it wrong. Um, uh, and I've, I've written um, obviously the piece for, for Sarah and Rodney, and I thought what would be really quite nice would be to do an album collecting together these commissions and these pieces that I've written for my family. Uh, and, and so that's what I'm working on at the moment. Is I'm sort of rearranging all the pieces and pulling them all together because I wanted to do something that was really personal. Uh, so that's that's what I'm working on, um, and it's it's got a, a title of Works for Art uh, because my son is Arthur, so it's called Works for Art instead of Works of Art. So it's Works for Art, uh, and I'm hoping to get it sort of finished maybe by the middle of the middle of the year, and hopefully get something ready for release by the end of the year if, if all goes well. Uh, and yes, I've already spoken to Rodney and Sarah about uh, cover ideas because it's um it, again albums and artwork has to be very particular. It's not a case of, of just picking any old picture and just throwing it on the cover. It has to has to match the music. It has to fit with the theme. In the same way where Rodney draws images and he gets commissioned to do albums, he likes to hear the music, hear the lyrics, understand what's going on. The same way if I'm writing mm -hmm. a record, the artwork is so important. You have to get something that absolutely matches and is symbiotic with the music. Uh, so, yeah, so there's only a, a few people that in the world that uh, that my music, I, you know, I, I, I'm lucky enough to be able to go to and say, this is great. Rodney is, you know, definitely the person for this one. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> and Bill Sandel says he hopes he knows the answer to what you're working on at the moment. Oh, yes, I'm doing my commission for Bill. <laughs> <laughs> if you check your... Did I send it? I think just before this started, Bill, I'd just done a mix of it and I was about to send it to you, then this started. So, <laughs> <laughs> if it finishes, I will send you the rough mix so you can have a listen. If you're happy... I'm doing my own plugging now. Um, 
get, let me know. I'll get the mastering done, uh, and I'll drop you a line about the other thing you asked me as well. Okay, and yeah, we've got lots of people saying thank you. We really appreciate it. Uh, a shout out to Candia McCormack there as well, who did a, a wonderful interview of Rodney and I in Cops yeah. Called Life. Oh, we've got a very nice little book that you might like to put in Cops with Life uh, at some yeah, point. Yeah, we, we, will, we will be sending a book of the post to Candia and hopefully yeah. you will <laughs> have a yeah. look at it for us. Okay, and yeah, thank you everybody for saying thank yeah, you. And yeah. and Pete is has now, he has been watching us all this time. This is very entertaining. He's now off to watch Thin Blue Line on YouTube. Yeah, so there nice we go. One. That nice could one. be your next thing to do after this, once you've been on to the website and had a look at the audio CD. And bought loads of stuff. Yeah, if you, when you go onto the website, you, you'll see the, um, uh, the the section, the Yender section, and it'll say there audio CD, and there is a sample of the narration with the music, and it, you'll get to hear the... Ooh, Candy, I said, ooh, thank you. <laughs> um, is Kelly the lady I was supposed to have contacted about an interview? In which case it is. I'm ever so sorry I haven't done it yet. I will do. <laughs> Public apology. Public apology. Public apology. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, oh, Ellis again. Jerry Anderson's Anderson's son, Jamie, does a Jerry Anderson podcast. Would you be interested in being an interview guest, Rodney? Yes, but you haven't asked me. I, but I think that Ellis We'll, we'll do that. Really, I'll yeah. fix it up for yeah. me. Okay. Okay, well, let's get in touch. We will sort that. And um, thank you, everybody. Yeah, for... thanks, uh, everyone who's, uh, you know, um, persevered and watched us to the bitter end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm fine. We did deviate once or twice, but um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, been in, it's been interesting. And to... I'm going to be cheeky enough to put that back in the bottom. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Thank you, Oliver, for joining us with this. Thank Oops. you, Sarah, for putting it all together. Yeah. Well, okay, right. Uh, if anybody would like to see us chatting again, have any ideas what they would like us to chat about, I, I get the feeling that Oliver might want to come back on sometime and talk about something else. Yeah, yeah I'm happy to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I've said that on screen so that he's agreed to it now. We should, <laughs> we, we should do one where maybe we talk about um, the story behind the bleak midwinter, because that's quite an interesting story as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. So we'll 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 work out between us when when we can do that and mm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. It seems sad to go, but <laughs> mentioned that this bit you you are going to repost this on YouTube for anybody that decided to go off and make cups of tea halfway through. Yes, we. It, I will work out how to download this. It, apparently, it's simple, and I will put it on YouTube, and it will be you'll be able to watch it again on Facebook over and over. Please watch it on Facebook over and over. It would be nice to see that you've been watched several thousand times and make me happy. Even if you just play it in the background. <laughs> oh, one last thing. Okay, one more thing. Have you ever thought of doing a point and click video game of Orny's Otherland? What is um, a point and click video game? I'm not absolutely sure. It's not been in game games for some time let us know what it is ellis and we will we'll think about it send yeah. Us, yeah we'll send an email or yeah okay. it's not that I, I don't have the coronavirus or this nose sort of <laughs> blowing it's just uh just one of those things a bit of an allergy to the dog i think <laughs> who's been very good and quiet so right yeah, so, okay, okay. Right, right 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 enough said okay i'm gonna thank you very much okay goodbye everyone Bye. 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 Bye.